and David Lloyd, formerly of Lancashire and England, chose his man of the match. It was Alan Lamb. Uh, welcome to the highlights of the third one international in the series for the Texaco Trophy. Of course, the handsome trophy was in fact won by England for their wins at Edgbaston and Old Trafford. But uh, Lord's has its own special atmosphere, even more so earlier today when the new stand, the Compton and Edridge stand, was opened by Dennis Compton at the nursery end of the ground. The weather, it was fine, and that's a relief after earlier matches. It said cloudy with sunny intervals, but it wasn't too much cloud around. There were changes in the teams. Alan Lamb was out. He'd hurt his foot also on the day that he had been removed from the vice captaincy of England. And in came Dermot Reeve of Warwickshire, and out went Chris Lewis. In came David Lawrence of Gloucestershire. And for West Indies, well, their side had one change. Gordon Greenwich twisted his knee at Manchester, and in came Brian Lara. The umpires were Mervyn Kitchen and David Shepherd. England won the toss, and they put West Indies into bat. So we'll join them now in the third over. Lawrence is bowling to Dujon. It's the first ball Dujon faced. The score, eight for no wicket. And there it is. Well, Geoffrey Dujon's waited 11 minutes for that. First ball, out. And Lawrence, well, he settled down, full length. And the extra pace did the rest. They looked quite pleased then, did David Lawrence, after he take that wicket. Slip was in danger of being trodden as he ran through. But it's a good full-length delivery. Quite a gate there. It didn't do a great deal. It just kept on going down the slope. And do jump playing a long way from his body. Just coming back a fraction. But he was never really on line. Well, the hat tells us who number three is. Richie Richardson. Lawrence at the moment is putting everything into it. And that came back up the hill quite a bit as well. It just caught the pad, the thigh pad, and good take by Jack Russell. Philip Defratus, he's bowled well in both of these Texaco games at Edgbaston and uh, at Old Trafford. Oh, what a terrific take and a catch! Wonderful piece of wicket keeping, and what a good delivery to come back up the slope from the nursery end. And now West Indies really in trouble. Eight for two, but what a wonderful piece of wicket keeping this was. This is Brian Lara. And this is that Freitas dismissal again ball nipping back up the hill and there you can see how quick it is at full speed brilliant catch well, it would have to be a good shot and travelling very fast to get past the Kratos that's one hell of a fielder Over's gone so far, the 44 for two. Oh. We won't see anything better than that today. And if we do, we'll all be on our feet applauding. Well, 
I'd have thought uh, the lesson might have been uh, might have been learned. decided that uh, David Lawrence has to go. And that's a tremendous blow by Richardson. Simply decided to go down the pitch, come what may, and whack it. Yeah, so that was definitely a predetermined shot. He was off before Richard Owens let go of the ball. And uh, you can see him there on his way. He didn't get to the pitch. And he only, he just got away with that. It could easily have gone straight in the air. He's got him. He tucked it up on leg stump. Richardson went for the big one, but... Already the men were deployed on the boundary there, and he hits it straight to De Freitas. Well, unnecessary, really. I know the attacking intention was there, but really, he just almost decided beforehand and hit it straight to De Freitas at deep mid-wicket. Four fielders on the offside, saving one. They're not a bit of use when the ball is hit straight down the ground for six. Well, maybe the West Indians don't want to with playing the Test Series. It looks like they've certainly made a deliberate attempt to try and hit him this morning. And he's done it. Well bowled. Again, he floated it. Nice little variation. Lara, he knew, was looking to push it along a bit. Classical method of dismissal. Gus Logie. That's four. That's Logie off the mark, finally. 14 deliveries it took him. Compensated. That brings up the hundred. We're in the twenty-sixth over. Illustration, really, of how well England have bowled, and particularly Reeve and Illingworth. The first fifty came off sixty-seven deliveries, and the second one off eighty-eight. Beautiful strike from Viv Richards. <laughs> Too short from Richard Illingworth. And Richard seized on it straight away. Uh, Gooch has decided to uh, try to slow things down a little. West Indies getting away from England immediately after lunch. De Freitas comes back on this time from the pavilion end, the members end. Straight down his throat. That's uh, the third time I've seen Richards do that in recent times, twice against the Australians, and now De Freitas coming back on has combined with Richard Illingworth. He hardly had to move an inch. It still didn't stop the heart flutters as the ball was coming towards him. Well, he said he didn't look so many heart for us as he caught that ball. He made it look very easy indeed. Short of a length, they're just pulling around, swinging around, helping it on its way. And they're straight into Richard Lingworth. And, well, really, he took it like a piece of cake. Thank you very much. Straight in. So, he'd be very happy. He's come to the international scene. And without any trouble at all, he's settled in. Carl Hooper is the new batsman.
is Pringle. And the Freitas might be on the ball, but Pringle's not. Two balls and six boundaries played uh, in delightful fashion. And that's the sort of counter attack they've produced all day. Every time England get on top, a batsman comes out and starts to flail away. As the freight is pitching short here, not often he's done that today, and Hooper very quickly onto it and flint away over mid wicket. It's in a position to get a good score here. If these two can put another 30 or 40 and get the score past 200, and the bowlers can just chip in with a few, 250 plus, that would be a reasonable score. That's a cracking shot. Again, Dermot Reeve got the uh, gent the waist wing, but slightly overpitched. Vicious flick of the wrist by Logie. That's a lovely shot. There was elegance there as well as the power. Well, I think Carl Hooper had made up his mind there that if Pringle pitched the ball up, he was going to whack it. I think this is predetermined. Just pitched up there. The foot's already going down. He's into the shot almost before Pringle's delivered it. Logie 60, Hooper 10. Oh, that's a cracking shot. What a wonderful stroke. Well, a six over extra cover. Using your feet to the medium facer, Derek Pringle. Now, Pringle's not used to people dancing down a pitch like that, but what perfect execution. Well, it's gorgeous timing, is that? You've seen Viv Richards hit people with power. This is timing, lovely footwork, full flow of the bat going straight through, keeping the bat straight, and the timing is exquisite. And he has a young man who likes to box as well. I think Carl Hooper would prefer to face him bowling than boxing. That's high. And it's going to be caught by Neil Fairbrother at fine leg. Well, that's the luck that you need. He would never claim that to be his best ball. But he has removed Hooper. He's got his second wicket. And Hooper goes to 26. Well, it won't matter. David Lawrence will tell everybody he bowled for that. He kept it short. He wanted Carl Hooper to hook. I just dropped it short. He'll tell his mum. There was Carl Hooper. Thought he could hit me out of the ground. Went straight down Fairbrother's the throat at fine leg, one of the safest pair of hands. Another one of these good England fielders, good movers. They catch these in catching practice before the start of the match, and they've no problem catching them during the game. Malcolm Marshall is the new batsman. Got it, and then he hadn't. Lawrence is down there, a picture of disappointment, so is the wicket keeper. Yes, that was the wicket that England badly wanted. Bounce, little top edge, it went pretty quick, but a 200 chance, didn't have to jump, and Russell will be disappointed at missing that. Graham Gooch bringing himself on. And got him. So that's good reward for Gooch. He's kept a full length. He's bowled straight. The brave decision to come on and bowl at the death. Every over he bowled, then one of his main ones didn't have to. 
And that's the end of a very fine innings from Gus Logie. Again, slightly slower ball and trying to drive through it. Didn't quite get there. And, well, a comfortable catch there for Gooch. There we are, 2.41 for seven, five overs left. That's the sort of uh, score which West Indies would be looking to add 40 at least off the last five overs. England would settle for, I think, anything less than that. Well, that's a good start to whatever West Indies have got in mind. One fast bowler hooking another, six of them, in fact. And Michael Norton's a really strong little man. I mean, I said before, he's only about five foot nine, ten stone, but just look at this shot. Over mid wicket there and six runs. And out. Well, there's different ways of getting a wicket, and that might look fortunate, and it is in a way, but David Lawrence has deserved that. And away goes Malcolm Marshall. And that's the eighth wicket to go down, 258 for eight. Face slightly open, trying to get on top of it, but didn't quite. And another catch that was taken very, very easily indeed by De Freitas. Courtney Walsh. Gloucestershire through and through. Walsh out, LBW Lawrence given out by umpire Shepherd. 258 for nine. And that's a wicket that might be recalled down west in the years to come. Yes, it just shows that uh, if you have that little bit of extra pace, uh, it's not too often that uh, nine, ten jacks make too many runs. And Walsh didn't play either of those deliveries very, very well. Eventually, six more runs were added. In fact, it was a bad start by the West Indies. With a total of eight, two wickets fell. Then there were three very enterprising partnerships. Richardson and Lara put on 63, Richards and Logie, 73, and Logie and Hooper, 63. But really, it was a disappointing end. They fell short of a realistic target. England bowled well. The biggest wicket taker was David Lawrence with four wickets, but he conceded 67 runs. Truly the best bowler was De Freitas, two for 26, and Richard Illingworth, a fine performance, two wickets for 53, off his 11 overs. So what did England require? 265 runs to win at a run rate of 4.82 per over. We'll join them now in the fourth over. The score is 11 for no wicket, and Patterson bowls to Gooch. That's a great shot. And I particularly like the way he then just wandered away from the crease and didn't even bother looking at Patterson. This is Ambrose. To be quick. Yes. Brilliant fielding. Mervyn Kitchen was getting himself in a position. He wasn't quite settled to give the decision but he was certainly turned and had a clear view of it there was good umpiring uh, new batsman Graham Hick slow to the line of the ball. And that's a lovely shot. Up on the tips of the toes. 
behind it and yet giving himself room to get the bat through. And now we come to our first change, which brings on Malcolm Marshall. That's a big, big appeal. Down the leg side and the batsman walks. All umpire Kitchen has to do is nod his head. Mike Atherton, well, he always thinks a little unlucky to get a, a stick down the leg side. He played so well, 25 runs. Neil Fairbrother is the new batsman. Oh, Fairbrother's gone. Oh. Well, that was a classic case of one batsman in first gear and the other in fourth. Well, certainly Fairbrother made the call. He first hick into running there. Comes in with a very positive attitude in one day cricket, Neil Fairbrother. Scores very quickly himself and really looks for the runs, but that was certainly a tight one. Gone for the shot, and it's found the boundary, but uh, far from the way that Neil Fairbrother intended. Neil Fairbrother really riding his luck. He's played missed outside off stump. He's had a top edge hook, and now another top edge. Well, that's a lovely, clever, orthodox cricket shot. And that's the 50 partnership, and uh, it's coming just under nine overs. Four more runs for him. Well, Graham Hicks, another player that's been made to struggle, to work hard for his runs. This is a lovely cricket shot, thoughtful, not trying to beat the ball, just lets the ball come on, a lovely late cut. Beautifully played, exquisitely placed for four. That's a good shot. Beautiful late cut. He's played two late cuts today that have been gems. All run four, second of the day. Well, there's been no better shot play today than that one. They came together when the score was 48. It's now 151 for two. <laughs> Graham Hick gets 50. 50 for England in an international match. The end of some great expectations, both of Graham Hick and of the whole British cricketing community. Well, that's a thumping shot, tremendous straight batted pull shot. Well, I think that's the relief and confidence come from getting your first half century. Feeling great now is Graham Hick, loosener from Marshall short of a land and just whips this away a short arm jab and it raced away to mid wicket lovely shot oh, it's a 
amazing shot, really. Fetched it. He wants the second one. And it was really a sprinting job, a lovely throw from the boundary. But nothing the West Indies can do. Stops the 200 coming up. Phil Simmons. Well, you know, this is uh, this is wonderful stuff. Short it may have been, but uh, this is the real fair brother that has done this sort of stuff for Lancashire over the last three or four seasons. One of the most destructive of batsmen. Patrick Patterson. Oh, well, dear me, now we're seeing some of the form that has delighted and thrilled Worcestershire supporters for several years. Such a powerful man, and it's almost as though one sees the chains coming off with each shot. Kirtley Ambrose is back, and uh, well, they've certainly run well, and plenty of very, very tight singles. I think Graham Hick can be ready for the call. There it is. What a cheer he's got. It's a wonderful hundred. Very close to being a match-winning one. And, well, it's been a long time for Neil Fairbrother. Virtually all downs and very few ups in the international scene, but this is, this is the breakthrough, possibly, for him. shot it really is that's a wonderful shot it wasn't pulled it was picked up and the eye and timing from that little man Neil Fairbrother there was terrific well it really is full of confidence now this is a good length ball from Patterson he just flips it away picks it up just on the rise 48 for two when he came in and uh, run right now is nearly going to baffle the computer Only four. Well, this is a young man being absolutely dismissive of the fast bowler. He's so confident now and cocky with his century behind him. He's just dismissed that good length ball from Patterson, just swatted it away over the leg side. Well, that just might be out and is disappointing end but uh, i think neil fairbrother will get the sort of reception reserved for very few people at lords just listen to this one well a sporting shake of the hands there by the west indians they're applauding what has been a fantastic innings you've not seen many better one day innings as that Terrific player. All action it's been up and down the pitch for singles for his own and the other batsmen. Shots all around the wicket. What a glorious day for him. Yes, you might as well look round, Neil Fairbrother. Look round and enjoy it. Everybody here at Lord stood to applaud him. Thoroughly deserved. What a shame it should come to an end. Patrick Patterson going wide of the crease, just altering the line, the angle to him. But unfortunately, it was on to him, hit the splice, and just lobbed it quite easily for Viv Richards to take the catch. 213, the partnership was worth. And what a 
That's Graham Hick done with that one. It's four runs. And that's the end of the game. England win by seven wickets. England had a good start then, but really it was all about Hick and Fairbrother, and it was record-breaking. Fairbrother, first hundred by an England player against the West Indies in one-day cricket in England, and that third wicket stand of 213, the highest third wicket stand for England against anyone in one-day cricket before. Partnership of 213 off 192 balls. It was sensational stuff and terrific entertainment for the crowd. Hard work then for the West Indies bowlers. They were wicket takers, but only two. Patterson, one for 62, and Marshall, one for 49. And so England won this third match by seven wickets, and they won the series 3-0. And of course, on the balcony afterwards, Graham Gooch was there to accept the Texaco trophy. The Colin Cowdery nominated the man of the Neil match, Fairbrother. and he obviously elected Neil Fairbrother. Man of the series competition was won for the West Indies by Vivian Richards, their captain, and England's man of the series was Michael Atherton. Wonder